Hi, I'm Christopher Hine, and today we're going to be talking about Aikido wrist techniques and what the heck's going on with those. All right, guys, so today we're going to be talking about the Aikido wrist techniques. Aikido wrist techniques, the, the techniques for wrists in Aikido are one of probably the most stand out things people notice about Aikido. So early on people are like, whoa, that's the, the martial art that has a lot of those kind of wrist techniques and that's really cool. Important thing to understand is Aikido certainly did not invent wrist techniques. Wrist techniques have been around for a really long time. So lots of different martial arts have wrist techniques. Um, in Japan, when we're talking about martial arts that have a lot of wrist techniques, we're talking about Koryu Jiu Jitsu. And Koryu Jiu Jitsu just means old school Jiu Jitsu, old style Jiu Jitsu. Now old style Jiu Jitsu was focused on battlefield grappling. It wasn't focused on uh, unarmed situations, right? In, in Japan, when you were doing unarmed situations, that was sumo, right? Uh, when you were talking about battlefield grappling, you were talking about Jiu Jitsu. So Aikido has a, a relationship to old style Jiu Jitsu and that's why we have those techniques in our system. And for the context in which we're talking about Aikido, it's really hard to pull those techniques out. So we need those techniques. Now in the modern era where we're really focused on unarmed martial arts, wrist techniques are a low percentage thing. So if you're in an unarmed situation, you're unarmed and they're unarmed, doing a wrist technique is low percentage. Not impossible. Um, you can see some examples of it being done, but, but very low percentage. Now in Aikido, inside the context that we're working on, they actually become high percentage techniques. Now the context is what you have to understand and what that context is. So today we're gonna be talking about that with Josh and Maya. I'm gonna show you a progression of drills that we use at this school that aren't Aikido, but they're kind of Aikido adjacent. And they will improve your Aikido wrist techniques if you work on these drills. So I'm gonna get Josh and Maya here. Josh, Maya, let's go to work. All right, so we're gonna take you guys through a series of drills that I use here at the dojo, building from really simple to a hard practice, right? A more complicated practice. And in these, we're gonna work on wrist techniques. Now, why do we need wrist techniques in the first place? We need them to take something out of someone's hand or also could be to uh, clear someone who's grabbing our hand, right? Now, why would there be such hand emphasis? Well, because there's some kind of weapon. So we're gonna use this short stick right now for our weapon. Um, all it is is 18 inch uh, rattan dowel, so that's it, real simple thing. You could use it, you can cut a broom handle, you can cut an old Joe that's broken, whatever you want. Um, this is the size stick we're gonna use. Um, so this is gonna be our, our, our weapon, right? Now, now, it just is what it is, it's a stick. So don't pretend like it's a super deadly knife or anything else, right? It's, it's just a stick, it's that simple. And the idea of this progression is to teach general skills, right? So we're getting general skills. So even if you've been doing Aikido a long time, if you haven't done this drill, work on this in a very, very basic way. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do here is we'll have uh, Maya working against Josh here. So Josh is gonna hold the stick in the middle like this, okay? Maya's going to grab either side of the stick like this. Now right now, all Maya's gonna do is take the stick out of Josh's hand. Josh is gonna provide no resistance, right? So zero resistance. So she's gonna turn that dowel somehow and she's gonna find a way that it comes out of his hand. Now, she's not going to use any kind of crazy explosive action or anything, right? So none of that because um, Josh is holding it really light, so there's no need for that. So all this is is a technical understanding or a clarification of technical understanding of what's happening when she lightly tries to remove the stick from Josh's hand. Now when she's doing this, she's trying to find good, simple, easy little angles that make it easy for the stick to come out of the hand. And that's it, that's all she's looking for. And Josh isn't resisting her at all and she's going through that. Okay, generally what we'll do is three on one hand, three on the other hand, and then we'll switch over and Josh will get to do the drill for her. So that's phase one, right? That's the number one phase. Okay, now the next one, Josh is going to stay in the basic same position, but all he's gonna do is hold it as hard as he can. So with his hand, he's gonna hold it as hard as he possibly can. Maya's gonna work to remove it. Okay, now, again, Maya wants to, if she possibly can, um, she wants, you just keep going, she wants to just take it out normally. She doesn't wanna use any explosive action. Now, it's a little bit harder for her, not a whole lot harder, because honestly, Josh is pretty rigid right now, so it's still not super hard. But what she's doing is she's starting to get the general idea of what it's like to remove something with resistance, right? So he's really trying to hold it hard, and she's trying to remove it from his hand. So this is the next phase up. Again, Maya's gonna really refrain from using any explosive actions that she can, although she might need to, right? So Josh could be so strong that she will need to use a little oomph to get it out of there. But if she can, that's that she wants to avoid that kind of stuff. Okay, so that's phase two. All right, and again, we do it uh, three right hand, three left hand, then switch over. Okay, phase three. 
So in phase three, what's going to happen here is Maya is going to try to remove it, but Josh is going to use more dynamic resistance, right? Now, what I mean by dynamic resistance is, uh, and just kind of fake it real slow here so they can see, is as Maya starts to move it, Josh is going to move his arm around and configure himself in different positions to make it more difficult for her to take it out of his hand. Now, this is not hugely more difficult because Josh still isn't moving his feet or anything, but as Josh, and go ahead and move it real speed now. So, but as Maya is trying to get this out of his hand, Josh is going to move his body around until she can find a way to get it out. Now, it's important to understand that the way she's taking it out of his hand, his hand is still exactly the same way she was using before. It's just now Josh is dynamically opposing her. So he's moving his arm in different ways to try and uh, oppose her actions. Okay, good. So that's phase three, and this is a dynamic phase. Now, phase four in this, oh, and in that, by the way, Maya might use some explosive actions because she needs to, but again, she's always trying to keep herself using as few dynamic actions as possible, and the reason is because she wants to get as good at the technique as possible and not just good at going faster or harder. Okay, now, sorry, phase four. Phase four. So in phase four, what we're going to do here is Josh is allowed to turn his hand over. So let's say Maya and go real easy right now. Maya gets it to a point where it's about to come out of the hand. Josh can turn his hand over and regrip, right? And he can regrip any way he wants, right? So as she turns it over, bang, he's going to try and regrip in a good way. So as Maya's trying to twist it out, now you guys can go live full speed. Okay, so as Maya's trying to twist it out, Josh is going to be able to regrip and grab it. Now, is, if his hand comes off, that's fine, Josh is still working. What Maya wants to do is now learn to, to separate it out, just like that, so she wants to pull it away. So as she's working to get it out and Josh is switching his grip over, she's trying to find a way to do it. Now she's not gonna block his hands like she just did, they're starting to amp up over here because I'm talking too much and they're getting antsy. But um, so basically she's gonna try and just stick to the stick right now and working the stick out and Josh is flipping his grip over as much as he can and Maya's trying to flip it over and pull it away from him, okay? So that's our phase four. Now our phase five, Josh, can intermittently switch his hand. So I can go ahead and do a slow one for us here. So as they start to turn it over, he can turn and, and don't turn your back to the camera, just stay, stay where you guys can all see. So as she starts to break it out of his hand, Josh can switch that other hand over. Now in phase five, he's not allowed to have two hands on, only one hand on at a time, right? So he's always got to switch. So what Josh, or Maya's looking for is a little break and as he goes to switch, she can pull it away, right? So that way he can't get to it, right? So this is our phase five. Go ahead and move a, a little bit full, full action so they can see. So she's trying to get it out, Josh trying to switch his hand over, right, and every time. And he, Josh is not also just going to wait there by it, right, so he's not going to do this number, right, because he's also training himself to be able to make switches from different odd spots, right? So, okay, good, excellent job. All right, so that's our phase five. Now, in our phase six, they're going to start in the same position, but the second that Maya moves, so the second she starts to move, Josh can add his second hand in, okay? So the second Maya starts to move, Josh can add that second hand. Okay, now they're wrestling two on two. On two. So that's a fair, a fair exchange. Now we're giving Maya the beginning advantage, so that is a good opportunity for her to try and explode as fast as she can initially. And what's good is this is kind of training Josh also, because Josh is learning to deal with something that happens really suddenly in real explosion. So it's on Maya's go when Maya wants to go, and then Josh immediately adds a second hand. Okay, now, uh, I'm going to get out of here in just a second, and they can actually go for it, and they're getting antsy, so they really want to, to go. Um, but what we're going to do here is we're going to run it, and once we're in phase six, they can move around as much as they want. So now you guys are going to get to see them go, and we're going to go just for a minute here and let them run with it, uh, and then you guys can kind of see how the full phase of the practice works. Now, it's important. Don't just jump to phase six. Go through the progression as I was outlining. Um, but I'm going to get out of here and let these guys go to work. guys so that's the six stage progression I use to start getting the students used to 
what risk techniques are, how to do them, how to resist against them, how to move and change and adapt with them. So that's a really basic practice. That practice can go into a much more live practice later. So that is totally a live practice in and of itself. They're both trying as hard as they can to get the stick out of each other's hands. And you can see uh, in phase six, once both hands are on, either person could tear it out. So you had Josh tearing it out sometimes, my tearing it out the other time. So whoever gets it, gets the stick. And the, the whole objective of that practice is just to get the stick. So you could try throws and stuff too, and you notice they didn't. It's not because throws were off the table. It's because a lot of times throws don't actually help. And if you start focusing more on doing a throw than you do on getting the weapon out, a lot of times you'll throw them with the weapon in their hand, and then that doesn't help you, right? And there might be times that that does help you, but the goal of that practice is to get good at taking something out of someone's hand, which is what a wrist technique actually is. So I could take any brand new person off the street, uh, and I've done this in our self-defense seminars, I take a brand new person off the street, and I just teach them the drill. I don't teach them how you're gonna take anything out of anyone's hand or anything else. And by the end of that drill, the students who never saw wrist technique before will instantly be doing kodagaishas and nikyos like crazy. They'll be doing tons of them. And the reason is because those techniques are super high percentage for that context. And the context is taking something out of someone's hand. So you will see tons of Nikyos and Kodagaishis from people who have never been taught the technique before. You'd be shocked at how quickly people can learn this stuff when you just give them a live drill like this to work with. So this live drill starts teaching you how to work with wrist techniques. Now one more caveat I have to add, actually probably two more caveats, one for safety and one for practicality. This is not the system of Aikido. So what you just saw is not the system of Aikido. It is not the ideal way to use a systematic approach to deal with conflict. This is a struggle, right? So this is a struggling method, so not the system of Aikido. Now it uses some of the techniques we see in Aikido. And it's a good way to improve and get better at those techniques. But this is systematically not what you would want to do in Aikido, right? In Aikido, I wouldn't want to rest assured on my skill of holding something in my hand and present something for someone to take it out of my hand. And then we wrestle over it. And because I'm better, then I could go, ha ha, I beat you because I've got superior skills at that. Um, that's not the goal, right? Aikido has a whole systematic approach. However, for the tiny bit of kumiuchi, struggle methods, that involve wrist techniques, this is a great drill to start out with and kind of progress through. Don't skip ahead, right? So go through each individual stage. Even if it seems boring, each stage will teach you more and more. And as you start getting more and more to the advanced stages in level six, you will start appreciating level one more. Because I personally work with level one a lot because I'm trying to figure out the most efficient angles to turn something to get it out of someone's hand. So it can give you a lot of skills there. Now the final safety warning I wanna give you with this, when you guys are really wrestling over it hard, that stick can have a tendency to fly at your face. And I have had students leave with big bruises on their heads and, and teeth can become endangered. So be careful and aware of that. Um, wearing face shield would be a great idea or putting in a mouth guard or something is a good idea. Um, and at the very least, be very careful of each other's faces when you start doing that. Don't get so rambunctious that you break each other's teeth out. Uh, all right, so I'm done giving my safety speech. I'm Christopher Hine. Thanks a lot for watching.